I'm a big fan of the future of the flexibility. Flexible devices, flexible dreams, flexible future, flexible bodies, relationships, and stories. Today, I will tell you a flexible story in which the biology meets its match. As a storyteller, first, I would like to describe who I am. My name is Janan, and I'm a junior fellow in the Society of Fellows at Harvard University and a postdoctoral researcher at MIT Koch Institute. I am super against gender discrimination and a big advocate of gender equality. But when I do science, I do it just like a woman. My devices are colorful, beautiful, curvy, sensitive, and multifunctional, like women are. You will understand what I mean in the coming pages of my story. Uh, I'm a forever, uh, forever teacher, a uh, learner, and as well as a teacher. Whenever I get a new student in my group, I first ask them a question. Can you define yourself with an object? Of course, you can answer this question when you are back to your hotel rooms or homes, but I do believe people resemble their home countries a bit. I'm from Istanbul, the one and only city which connects two different continents, Asia and Europe, via a bridge. Like Istanbul, I am a bridge. I bridge the gap between a hard, planar, boxy electronics and soft, time dynamic and elastic biology. Today's electronics are stiffer up to six orders of magnitude compared to soft tissue in human body. So when you want to integrate these two systems, there are severe challenges in mechanics mismatch and geometrical form mismatch. Since we cannot change the biology, I come up with new ways to use rigid piezoelectric materials and electronic components, which have the shape and mechanical properties that match of human tissues. My story began when I was a little kid. I'm deeply honored to give this talk at a curious stage. Um, my dad gifted me a book about Madame Curie when I was a little kid. I think my dad thought that I will get inspiration from her, but I went, when I read the book, I fell in love with her husband, Pierre Curie, who discovered piezoelectrics, piezoelectricity phenomena in a laboratory with his brother. What does piezoelectric mean? Piezo means stress, strain, deformation, and electric means positive and negative charges. Like in cigarette lighters, when you press the lighter, you ex uh, the piezoelectric tiny crystal express stress, which generates positive charges in one location and negative charges in another location, which means you create dipole between these two uh, locations and you create voltage and current. But then I studied, after this, I studied uh, physics and tried to learn the underlying mechanisms of piezoelectric materials. But then I realized physics is not enough. I need to learn more about materials, the properties of the materials. Here in this slide, I would like to emphasize the importance of the materials. This is the cartoon that I drew for Material, Art, Material Research Society art competition. First, the Nifton's head was hit by a pier, but it was a wrong material. He couldn't discover anything. Then, an apple just fell on his head, and bingo, it was the right material, and he discovered uh, the gravity. So we have to pick the right materials for the favorable outcomes of the desired applications because there are many piezoelectric materials in the universe in composite forms, polymer forms, and ceramics forms. So we have to, write, we have to pick the right materials for our own applications. So uh, beginning in January 2017, uh, I will be an assistant professor at MIT Media Lab and will direct conformable decoder group. What conformable decoder means? We live in an ocean of physical patterns, heartbeats, respiration, muscle movements, neural activity, air flow, temperature change, and so on. These patterns contain information, coded messages, that need to be excavated, refined, and defined. To do so, we need sophisticated interfaces, which collects this information, and tells us what's happening around us in our nature and environment, as well as in our body. 
So to do so, we need sophisticated interfaces all, to do all these things. So I will describe these things in coming chapters of my story. Many researchers are inspired by the nature. However, my research is inspired by the diseases of my family members. I create devices to satisfy my family members. The first chapter of my story is a device, a malleable device, which can wrap around your heart, lungs, and diaphragm. I'm a physicist, a material scientist, and device engineer, but the relationship between my research and heart is personal. When I was five years old, I learned that my granddad had passed away from a heart failure at the age of 28. And I promised myself to do something for heart patients when I reached the same age, 28. And I did it. My research was completed, and it was published in PNAS, and it was recognized by Illinois Innovation Prize, and I was named ter Forbes 30 under 30 uh, young scientists who are changing the world, of course, in a good way. And I was also named as the innovator of the year. Heart is not only a symbol of romance. It is also a hardworking and vital organ to maintain human's life. It has to be all the time. Out of 40 million heartbeats in a year, missing just a few can end your life. Imagine the heart as a real human dynamo. Every heartbeat of yours can be used to generate electricity. From the natural motion of internal organs, such as heart, lungs, and the diaphragm, mechanical energy can be harnessed. Active, implantable medical devices rely on battery power. When the batteries are depleted, the devices must be removed. I have focused on the operation of the cardiac pacemakers, extending battery life of a pacemaker, or eliminating the need for replacement would spare patients uh, repeated from repeated operations and any resulting surgical complications. Pacemakers are not always active, but when a heart stops beating, they are vitally important. I have developed a device with a battery that never needs to be replaced and is powered by the heart's own motion. Simple heartbeat. As a material scientist, I have been working on new ways to use rigid piezoelectric materials. As I mentioned before, a piezoelectric material is a crystal that generates voltage and current when it is mechanically deformed. I can make piezo devices in soft, flexi, tissue-like configurations by exploiting novel microfabrication techniques and tricks. My devices can take the shape of any human tissue. This is a new class of biocompatible mechanical energy harvesters. The device is malleable and can be laminated onto the heart as well as onto other soft tissues. Here is a heart, a cow heart with my device. Under the rhythmic contraction of heart muscle, device bends and relaxes, enabling it to supply enough charge to satisfy the needs of a pacemaker. As for the future, let's think big. What about wearing these devices on your skin to monitor your health conditions? Just like your watch, your arm movements will power it. And we should remember that they are flexible, thin, and very tissue-like. You won't even know that it's on your skin. Another chapter of my uh, story is to satisfy my granddad, who has a hypertension and who hates to use cuff sphygmomanometers and arterial tonometry, which requires mechanical fixtures, and you cannot use this kind of devices during your daily activity. You see here before my, my granddad, right after the cuff, sp uh, cuff sphygmomanometer measurement, and he's not quite uh, happy, but with my device, which is very tiny, you can see on his arm with a uh, gold color, he's quite happy because my device is small, lightweight, it's very thin, even capable of stretching up to 30%, and it has high level of effective modulus. It's mechanically invisible. You don't feel that it's on your skin, and it gives you high levels of pressure sensitivity as well as high response times. So you can place identical sensors on two different locations in your body, and simply by dividing the distance between the sensors and time lagging between current and time uh, graphs, you can calculate pulse wave velocity, which is extremely important because it can, it can tell you your arterial stiffness and it can give you uh, upstroke time, stroke volume variation, 
and our cardiac output, and it is directly related to blood pressure. And another device uh, that I created for my mom. This is my mom, and she has a skin modulus sensor on her cheek. Whenever I fly from US to Turkey, I buy skin creams from L'Oreal for my mom. And one day, she asked me if these creams really work. And I said, OK, let me think about it, and I can come up with a device. So this is the device that I created. We have big, big bars, actuators, and small bar sensors in an array form. So what we do, we apply voltage to the actuator, so it actuates and creates deformation on your skin. And sensor right next to the actuator senses this deformation and it gives you voltage output as a function of your skin. So you can, um, after this, of course, uh, my mom's dream came true, and I got funding from L'Oreal and also free samples. And we place, we, uh, uh, place this uh, skin, uh, creams on different locations of the body of my students uh, that you cannot do with the conventional methodologies, such as suction, torsion, and indentation, which are very painful. Not only to make my mom, my mom happy, but to make many patients happy, I created a spatial resolution device in a protector form, uh, a form which you can place on your uh, skin. Especially, uh, we did this device, uh, sorry, uh, trials on um, um, patients who have skin melanoma, and I work with dermatologists in the University of Arizona. And you can see that the device can do colorful map and tell you which part is stiff and which part is less stiff. So you can easily pinpoint the lesion where the lesion is and uh, gives you an estimated number about your skin variation continuously, which is very important, especially for doctors to determine if uh, they need to do a biopsy or not. And right now at MIT, I just want to give a flavor of what I do right now at MIT. It's a device, uh, three-dimensional devices, which can go inside your drip brain, and it's called Injectrode. And with this device, we can stimulate the brain once we have a dysfunctionality inside the brain through chemical and electrical uh, stimulus, and then modulate the ne uh, neural activity and normalize the behavior. Why do we do that? For instance, once if you have a Parkinson's disease, you have to take the drugs orally or intravenously, which is unnecessarily affecting all your body. But with this device, we can easily pinpoint the location where we need to infuse the drugs, and at the same time, increase the time of the therapy in less than seconds, and uh, find out if everything going well inside your brain and body. Um, as a conclusion, my story began, uh, and I work with uh, one-dimensional devices. Later on, I increased the dimension one more and did two-dimensional devices in a wearable fashion that you can wear on your skin. And later on, right now, I increase the dimension one more and do three-dimensional devices in a needle type that you can easily target your deep brain. And in future, near future, in my research group, Conformable Decoders at MIT Media Lab, I would like to increase the dimension one more and do four-dimensional devices. What if we have electronic pills which have the taste and smell, which will give us pleasure and at the same time um, do a multiple, uh, multiple um, uh, functionalities and activities in our body? What if we can uh, do a device which is non-spilled and on, non and on drug on-demand drug delivery in our brain? Or what if we have uh, talkative uh, clothing in our body? So for, her, for us, the heart was the extreme case. If we can harness the mechanical energy from a heart beating, we can harness mechanical energy every, anywhere where we have the motion. We can harness energy on our body joints whenever we walk, whenever we do daily activities, we can create this, we can convert this mechanical energy into electrical energy and run our biomedical devices. To me, today's medicine is a pajama type. You can wear your mom's, dad's, partner's pajama. It doesn't need to fit on you, but it can be loose. What, what, what I want to do is a suit type uh, medicine. It will fit on you, and it will be personalized. And we will be able to doing this with advanced and unusual engineering. To understand the future is not far off, we just need to try to understand and feel the progression nearby our carotid artery. See you in the future.